Well, hello there. Welcome once more to Quanchua's Kitchen. And if this is your first time stopping by, I'd like to say a very warm welcome to you. It is meal prep o'clock. Yes, we are making this delicious bean stew, some good light soup, and vegetable stew. Very simple one. I'm prepping a lot of meals for days that are coming up. And so it's just going to be that. And I'll be very honored to have you stick with me to the very end. Kindly give me a thumbs up before we even proceed. And if you're not subscribed, I hope you subscribe to my channel for more amazing content. Well, let's do this meal prep. Like all of my meal prep videos, I'm not going to really measure my ingredients. I'm going to do it the way I would typically cook, just eyeball everything. But there are recipes for everything that I'm cooking here on the channel already and I'm going to link them for you. And I'm so honored to let you know that almost all the ingredients I'm going to be using in this meal prep came from our backyard garden. Except for the onions, garlic, and ginger, everything else, pretty much everything else came from our backyard garden that my mom and I made this year. And I've been sharing content of that on my other channel, which I'm going to link up here. My other channel is called Simply Quanchua and there I do my gardening and hopefully more other contents coming up shortly like basically home related So kindly subscribe and watch out for amazing content over there as well
when I meal prep, I like to cluster my stuff so I can maximize time. And so I'm going to be blending together my onion, garlic, and ginger. That is going to go on the meat for the soup or into the soup, I should say. And then portion of it is also going to go into the vegetables too. So I'm going to blend everything together, split it up. And right now I'm chopping my onion that I'm going to be using for the vegetables too. And then I'm also going to go ahead and dice another onion which I'm going to be using for the beans too. This tomato and peppers that I'm blending is going to be split between the vegetable stew and the bean stew. I'm just trying to make room here so I can start making the stew to go on the beans. I have my palm oil here. I'm going to let that melt and into that I'm going to put some momone. This is fermented fish that is going to infuse in it and it's going to make my beans too very very delicious and fragrant.
Pour a little bit of the tomatoes and pepper here to make my bean stew pretty much about a quarter or even less of what I blended. Everything else is going to go in the vegetable stew. I had to set the goat meat of the stove to make room for the other vegetables that is going to go in the soup to cook faster. And it is done now. I've poured the blended tomatoes and pepper from the blender so I can blend the soup ingredients. And in the meantime, I've put the goat meat back because I'm going to blend this right away and pour it over the meat. So anyway, I forgot to add some bell peppers. I wanted to add some red bell peppers, so I just threw it in there on the hard vegetables. It's going to cook in the soup, so it's still good. It's pretty much better. <laughs> with our transmission to serve this little one a little slice of bread <laughs> back to work let's do this Tasting amazing. The aroma, hmm. Mean kind of say, I say when you're nice, I'm winning. We did so, you know, and so catch it. And I already gave my mother cue to start frying the plantain so we can have our late lunch. Yes, that's what we're having, and it's gonna be good. Meanwhile, the soup is almost done as well. Very, very fragrant, flavorful. I wish I could have a little bit of that as well, but hey, let me eat my bees in peace. So I'm going to cut some peppers and I'm going to put some of that in the vegetable stew and a little bit of that for extra spice in the bean stew. Mm -mm -mm.
delicious, yeah, yeah. Ooh, delicious, there, there. Delicious, yeah, yeah. Ooh, delicious, there, there, there. And yes. The garden peas also came from our garden. And look at how gorgeous those tomatoes are. Those are my favorites. And they go so well on your salads. I've just been eating them actually like fruit. I just wash them and just be chewing on them. So, so good. And nothing goes to waste, especially when you tell in this Arizona heat to grow your crops. Yes, those little pieces came off. Uh, they fell off some other squash that we picked previously. And yep, we saved those to eat. We're not going to throw it out. <laughs> and look at how big, how huge this is. Yes, like I said, watch how we've been doing this on my other channel. Hopefully, it's going to help you with some gardening tips or just inspiration. part about gardening in Arizona is the heat. Once the heat comes up, it is a struggle to keep your plants going. I don't know if you noticed that part of the bell peppers are just scorched by the sun. Your crops can pretty much cook in the heat. You just let it go one day without you tending to it. Or on a very hot day, regardless of what you do, you go to meet most of your stuff cooked. And so it is a big challenge to do that. And we are super excited to be able to enjoy as many of our crops as we can before the heat comes in big time and destroys everything. This cabbage came from the garden as well. My very first time planting cabbage. We also planted and harvested that broccoli, which I think we let it go for too long. So it started discoloring. One day we were gone all day and then we came back. We we're like, it is time to get this out of here. So we harvested it with all these other ingredients and yes we are actually excited to pretty much eat what we've grown what we've told for just look at how huge that broccoli is from our garden yes from our garden mm -hmm. <laughs> Ah, AM is a beans now bean. Beans too no aye ready. What do dear baby then ye dear ye baby coco? I made it a little bit light because you're going to put some gary on it. So pretty much almost a little bit of your gary consistency, but still in a still form. Gonna be perfect with rice and PC, whatever you want to eat it with. And trust me, it is popping. So I'm going to start making the vegetable stew and in the meantime I'm checking for salt in my soup it is perfect. I'm going to throw in some peppers which also came from the garden. Just let it sit a little bit. I don't want this to soften up because I don't want the heat to transfer into the soup. It has plenty of pepper in and we want these little ones to be able to eat some. So our soup pretty much is done as well. Yes, I use a way too big pot. This is one of my Obapa cookware from Mercy Cookware. And yeah, I like making soup in that.
So Ivana said grace and just when we were about digging in, Andy said he wanted to pray as well. So Madame is not going to wait for her brother to finish calling out everybody's name and everything, every toy that he has, has to be prayed for before we all eat. And yeah, we just have to laugh with our hunger and everything. Finally, he's let us go. We can enjoy our meal. Mm. We are trying to keep this too very very simple hopefully with nothing else but stuff that we just picked from our own yard so we are going to season it with herbs from the yard nothing major no seasoning cubes or anything just keeping it very simple pretty much clean I actually didn't even want to add some tomato paste but then I didn't want the stew to look too washed out I wanted a little bit of pop of color and so I added a little bit of tomato paste adding in my grape and cherry tomatoes whole because I want a little bit of texture for my tomatoes and since I blended tomatoes that is going to do that work for me I'm going to put some fish in this too this is a mackerel that I grilled outside and so I'm just going to break it up into big chunks and that is go, going to go in the stew. Like I said, we're keeping it very, very simple. Simple and sweet. <laughs> Pretty loaded, huh? I'm going to add the cabbage, yes, pressing down on it. I'm not even going to bother myself trying to stir this because I'm going to make a mess. So cover, let the heat get to it. It's going to wilt a little bit and it's going to make it super easy for me to stir into my stew.
cabbage something I've cooked down a little bit it's so easy to stir it into the stew now without making a huge mess so simple quick and easy our stew at this point is done as well I'm just going to taste for salt I think it needs a little bit more salt and pretty much that is it just let the salt mix up good dissolve into everything so about an extra minute or two on the stove top and our stew is done I never want to overcook my veggies cooking is done the hardest part of the work is done well sometimes the dishes is the hardest part and I'm just going to finish doing this cookies away and then I can go ahead and dish out the food I almost forgot about the star anise, but thankfully they are out here still in the pot. I've been able to dig for both of them and I'm going to discard it. You never want to forget to remove that from your food. Soup pretty much is easy for you to find, but if you leave it in your sauce, geez, you don't want to bite into it. And you definitely do not want somebody that you serve the food to bite into it. They probably would never ever want to eat your food again. It is not that terrible but of course it's not sweet it has a little bit of bitter aftertaste and of course the fragrance of it is just too powerful I don't want that in my mouth that is going to spoil everything little bit of it infused in your food perfect but to bite into it mm -mm -mm, not too good anyway we're going to start dishing out the rest of the beans as well and I'm making smaller portions as well as bigger ones pretty much just going off the dishes that I have and we are going to be freezing them as well. Yes, everything all dished out, ready to go in the freezer and the fridge. If you meal prep, I know you know how this feels like. You just feel like you conquered something so huge. And yes, it is a big feat. All this in the freezer, I am just going to be rest assured that people are going to have food to eat when mommy is gone. <laughs> and, you know, 
for me, meal preps just make life super, super simple. I'm going to cover these all, put them away, and then we'll do some cleaning. So we're not done yet. I hope you stay with me so we do a little bit of cleaning before we call it a night. Cooking in this summer heat means you may not be able to open your windows whilst you cook and so all that odor is going to stay indoors. So I'm going to try to neutralize mine with the simple pot puri. So I'm using a lemon and some cinnamon. Typically I would add some orange as well. I have no orange and this is just going to work. So I've put it on the fire. It's just going to boil up slowly on very low heat and that way Whilst I clean, I know it is cooking. I'm not going to forget about it. Typically, I used to just do it the next day, but now I've chosen to be doing it whilst I clean up. So it's infusing away, and once I'm done, I turn off the stove. And if I have to continue the next day, I do that. You just don't want to forget about this. And I've done that before. Everything turned super, super black. So I prefer to do it whilst I'm still busy in the kitchen as opposed to doing it when I'm being restful or doing other things away from the kitchen because it's pretty easy to forget. I somehow bent the bottom of this part and it's proving a little difficult to wash. When this happens, please don't be scrubbing away on your pot. Just do this, watch me. I'm going to use baking soda. I'm going to pour about two tablespoons in my pot. Now I'm going to get a little bit of water out of this. Just enough to cover the bottom. And I'm going to bring this to a boil. Once your baking soda solution begins to boil, you'll find out that it starts to lift the burnt food from the bottom of your pot just like this as you can see that the burnt food is pretty much just tearing off the bottom and that is it it's easy for you to clean now I'm just going to turn off the stove let it cool off a little bit and once it is cooled off I'm just going to just pour everything out of my pot pretty much everything is lifted what is left there is just going to be so easy for you to just use your sponge to get rid of sometimes you pretty much have nothing just clean your pot after this 
And that is how simple it is. Don't use a spoon, don't use anything to try to scrape away the burnt food. No matter how bad it is. I have had it worse. I have burnt jollof in this same pot and it came out clean using this simple method. So I hope this is helpful to you. Save those beautiful cast enamel pots, okay? Now we are going to just vacuum and clean the floors and then we're pretty much done. When I say I'm thankful to be able to share with and learn from you, please believe that I am. In one of my cleaning videos, I had a lot of you recommend a steam up for me. Actually, the cleaning company Zero Rex, that, that's my floors, also did recommend that I get a steam up to clean my floors. And a few months ago, I got this steam up and it has been just amazing, like a true lifesaver. On a busy tearing day like this when I finish cooking I don't have to grab my mop and bucket anymore I just put some distilled water or some zero water this is what I actually have in here now from zero reg so just my zero water and just clean the floors I pretty much maybe just spot clean so the area the nook area where I did the cooking and walking about if I'm super tired, I just do this area and I have my floors squeaky clean, sanitized, ready to face the next day. Because you know what, sometimes you're so tired and I just make up my mind that I'm just going to go ahead and call it a day and then hopefully the next morning I will clean up. But things happen, you know. As a working wife and mom, as well as content creator, sometimes it is hard to find the time to do things. And it never happens but with this steam up I make it a point to just clean up right after I am done so we are not carrying the grime to other parts of the house and making it everywhere super dirty so I might be tired but you just spot clean and then you call it a day just look at how clean my floors are with this less stress on my body I am super tired anyway and so I just wanted to say thank you all for being a part of my life, for um, all the joys that creating and sharing content with you brings to me. Thank you for how far you've brought this channel. I hope you help me continue to grow. Kindly give me a thumbs up if you haven't and please subscribe if you have not subscribed. Check out my other channel. I hope to be bringing more amazing content there. Please tell your family and friends about Contour's Kitchen. And like I said, I truly appreciate you all. I hope this has been inspiring to you. I hope it has made you want to get up and do something. And hopefully I'm able to bring you more of this. Kindly comment more meal prep if you want me to be doing more meal preps. Thank you so much. And until I come your way next time with something delicious or hopefully inspiring, be loving, be kind, be happy. This has infused enough. I'm done with everything, so I'm going to turn it off and we'll call it a night. Delicious.